Last week we had a guest from Barcelona and I began the session by stumbling through an introduction in another language. It was very embarrassing for particularly. I started this week's session by a list, giving you a list of Jeff's achievements, by no way an exhaustive list of, of what he's about. I think the last hour has proven quite clearly what a privilege it's been for everyone in the room to hear from. Jeff and I have been colleagues, friends for maybe four years, and I never know what he's going to say when he walks into the room. I've never heard the same statement twice from him. That's quite a Quite the feeling itself, I think. How many times have you, as students, sat in front of a lecturer or a speaker who's hidden behind the pulpit? There's two in the room right now. I didn't know. There was one last week. How refreshing it is to see a PowerPoint hide behind a speaker. To engage in, with an audience you've never met. Jeff has no idea what he's coming into. It's a skill that you will not experience. By the way, unless he was doing it, then you see there is always an added value. That's all I ever had. I'm not ever going to be included enough to be welcomed enough to see you through an experience of a term time. Or that all important time which you need to become used to those challenges. But the ultimate engagement came when I walked in that door and I said good morning. I could not insult you by not having known you or having the preparation to plan a curriculum-based exam tested environment unless I got a feel and a sense of what you were about. I scanned every single one of you as I came in. There was that 60 second window of establishing the who, the what, the why, the how, and the bubble the way. And then I drew out of my subconscious memory bank something that I hoped and felt would help every single one of you. Your body language is completely different to how I first engaged with you. Because you all have so much doubt, fear, unsurety of a world that you expect to hand you something. I couldn't bring a PowerPoint. What would I be trying to say to you other than to compliment and add value to what I know already exists? into, yes, a colleague, but I'd say a fellow traveler in the kindred spirit. You have to realize that the world is, although it is interesting, it is dark. You are the light, and you can make that difference. You have to make that difference. My ultimate benefit is I walk in, and this is the only thing that comes from only near competition karate. But I'm able to do it in a suit and tie, jack and snacks, get up front and personal. And the one thing you will do go with will be that. You only count to me again. But I know I've sown enough seeds. And words, by the way, are the most potent weapons of peace or mass weapons of destruction. <clears throat> Jeff can speak with quite fluidity, I mean, he'll probably interrupt me within the next sentence or two. I'll be the best. I speak as fast as I can with one from the other side. Opportunity dances only with those who are on the dance floor. Fantastic question. Yeah, Bob, I'd like to see that you're saying for the Olympics, that like the, you know, the key points that they say and maybe they want to meet, is that the same for the Paralympics? Are they like involved in any of that? Um, Sadly, they're seen as two separate entities, although Sir Philip Craven, who coincidentally is a Brit and is the president of the International Paralympic uh, Committee, is an advocate supporter of the social, cultural, and human benefits that can be realised for major games. And um, I firmly believe that I believe the Paralympics certainly provides a new chance of the advocacy the work that we are hoping to introduce next year, the best hope for the legacy pledges that were made and the spirit in which they were made. Um, the Olympics will play their part, but I think the corporate influence on the Olympics now reflects the corporate motivations 
And even with their corporate social responsibility, I see that being an add-on. But the Commonwealth Games, we were the last minute consideration of a youth culture and community program. We were given a mid a thousand tickets. We invited a hundred young people who would have even thought of being included in the games. And we had 400 of each of them, three or four days, experience the games. And whether it was at the Stonebridge Estate, the Met Bumps in the Gage, in the Manning, they took the special needs kids from Wolverhampton to those games. And it was an extraordinary experience. Since that time, we've been doing the legacy work up and down the country and even globally. But it isn't something that people fully buy into. But I firmly believe that you have the Olympics, you have that two to three week gap, whilst the facilities and the provisions are actually converted, and then you have the Paralympics. And I think everybody would be well best served looking at the Paralympics and seeing what they would provide. But the committee has representations of both Olympic and Paralympic um, interests, but it's the common interest that we need to be loving hard for, and that's something that I'll certainly be doing. Right. To a majority, 83%. I'm sorry, the figures do not add up. So whilst the BNP continue to achieve large numbers in recruitment, I'd say there's always a recession that challenges us, but even more so, for example, the Olympic truce would be on the streets, actively ad ad advocated by everybody and signed up to by everybody. Don't forget it is the only cross-party agreement by way of the big document. You would then start to see the cultural framework put into place that would reflect the regions and nations committee, who have yet to put out their proposals, but are supposed to be looking at this. Your own very much um, university campuses will host competing nations. How have we not been able to bring that all together into a really, really vibrant and exciting social and cultural community campus that will reflect a cultural framework by which we can deliver education, health, social and civil order environment? In the middle of a recession, do you think that's what I know these got these aims and legacy uh, pleasure that ones are going for? Surely, the circumstances we're already in before we're really we knew the recession was coming. Do you think it was now there are very few people, there's not 100% of the way this institution even speak of the community and the level of, of content and experience that speaks across generations. It's your chance, right? Stat, Clay, right? That's two people. There's one or two others in the room. Uh, it's your chance to engage with Jeff now. Uh, you can sit there, you're looking shy. You've got questions written down, all you As I said, knowledge and experience are in abundance. I think wisdom is sometimes the thing that we most ignore. Whereas if history teaches us anything, is there are always recessions. It's a cyclical reality of fact. We have a good time we forget, and the only time we remember is that we have pain. And that's what we're going through now. Because 4.3 trillion is not something in debt I would want to leave my children. I need my children to have to encounter with their children. But I think there is an intergenerational responsibility. The original bid, pledge, and security of those schemes at games aims would be justified if. 10 billion plus exchequer tax and lottery commitment made to those games actually had a legacy beyond 2 million participating young people. Um, if it delivered on the pledge, the spirit of those pledges within the social group of its citizens, it would be a good one. I think the comprehensive spending review announcements, which saw in real terms a 35% cut in community and school support, to be a complete policy contradiction to the very ideal. That those are the four key pillars upon which all that creative energy and innovation comes from what I believe is yourselves. That's a model that meets that type of scenario. It isn't there yet, but I do believe with the business plan announced last week, it's certainly what we're scouring through at the moment and why the 2011 Legacy Manifesto will be actively advocated and promoted for way of seeking by people like yourselves. Because it won't happen otherwise. Do not expect the local organising committee to do this. They're not supposed to. Their job is to deliver a successful and memorable games. What has not been put in place is something to match the local organising committee. The legacy company is only interested in the East End And I don't think that's a fair, equitable, or just distribution of wealth when you consider 
that the lottery that has been drained from the rest of the country to go into an East End corridor at the expense of. I think there are lots of challenges, but we're in there at the moment. And yeah, we have to go to Treasury, we have to go to East Department, but I do welcome the business plan um, policy proposals. They're never ideal, and you know, we, we have at this moment a competing political ideology. But I think there needs to be a, a greater national interest. Um, when I competed, I was never proud of leaving out and succeeding and achieving with that great Britain team. I'm, I'm a global citizen, I'm a British subject, and I'm an English taxpayer. <laughs> Where will they go? Where the pass it goes? Um, my mother still lives eight minutes away from what would be the Olympic Village. Um, there are significant challenges. What I would be saying is those poor people should be going nowhere. If they demonstrated, if they challenged, and there have been compulsory purchase orders made. People have been relocated. It is one of the prices you pay for regeneration and renewal. It is worth remembering that regeneration was born in this great city. It came after riots. Since that time, billions have been invested in areas of deprivation, and the poorest coast had jobs. But it hasn't really resonated, and it hasn't really bothered you. Don't care now. <laughs> Not interested. Because you know, when you stop winning the gold, it's amazing how they forget you. And that's why you have to remember loyalty, trust, confidence is all the poor have sometimes. And that's why the communities must hold strong. That is why I still commit myself in going into those communities and reminding them. I went into Soweto um, before I came back from the World Cup, a little bit guilty of living too rich, a VIP lifestyle, and really needed to give some hope in my motivations as to what would happen next. We've worked for 17 years in South Africa, and I committed myself to South Africa in the post-apartheid era, in seeing sport rebuild the nation and give it some social and human relevance. And I walked into schools that had nothing. They didn't all have a mobile phone, so that told me something. But they did have that little glint in their eye. They did have that spirit, that energy, that ambition, that hunger. That's what the poor should never forget. That they, as my mother said, I will buy them. You are no better or no worse than anybody. The late Gordon Richards, who inspired and handed me the battle responsibility, in 1968, that the youth of this country have been failed. We, the establishment of institutions, have abdicated our responsibility in helping them realize their potential so they would not feel inferior or superior to anybody, either at home or abroad. That was a general message. And I stumbled on it last week, and I kept that press cutting, and I thought, has anything changed? The poor are rich. Because wherever I've gone, wherever people tell me about the inequalities that reside, I remind people of one simple thing. We all bleed red. The poor, in my view, if they become a voice, a collective voice, of many talents, and some of the most innovative things come from the streets, some of the most challenging things come from the streets, but it won't be given. That's the one thing I've realized. It will have to be challenged. That's what democracies are for. That's what that freedom of speech is for. That's why last week I got the ultimate buzz watching your peers. They were on, on the land posts, they were everywhere. Everything stopped in central London. But in that, in that flip, there were those, as there will always be, who want to take it to the max. Did you see the young man who put that fake glass through? The rest of it made about a glass on and he wanted to take the world, and I went, it'll be interesting. <laughs> And I thought, if he can be that bold and brave and stupid, there's potential. But you have to take that energy, you have to channel it, and you have to focus it. 
And every single day is a gift. 